So let's dive into Storyboard Pro. When you launch it, it gives you the start screen. And like other Tuboom products, we have the create section and recent projects. So if you have a project you've worked on, you select it, click open, or you just select it. Otherwise you can click open project and go find a project. But if you want to make a new one, you can just type in the name that you want it to be choose where it's going to be, browse to find the folder. I've already done that previously. Most of the time the core settings are going to be sufficient for you. Notice it is putting a project title here and we'll see how that impacts things in a little bit. So now I can click on create project and once I do that it's going to create the project folder with all the subfolders, project file, everything that I need. So like other Toon Boom project or programs, it's not just simply a self-contained file. Now the core interface when we look at it here is similar to other Toon Boom products so that we have our tools on the left hand side. We have a lot of different button controls available to us. We have our tool properties. So if we choose a tool paintbrush or pencil, We'll see we have options to work with, we have different brushes we can work on, and we can double click on a brush, set the settings, etc. Or pencil, brush, pencil, whatever. Uh, so you can decide what's going to work best for you. Key thing in storyboarding is we're typically not creating finished artwork. So it's less about having the perfect brushes because a lot of what we're trying to do is get the point across. We're trying to figure out within our main area and we have our options so we can narrow down to see this is the totality of the frame but now I can see the bleed area outside of it. We can zoom if you have a mouse wheel otherwise one and two on the keyboard zoom in and out so if you have an extended keyboard it's numeric keypad is super easy to click on those to do so. So now we'll notice that I'm in scene one and panel one for my storyboard here. So if I'm going to have a character and you know maybe I'll have some eyes, nose, mouth, and we can see so we can figure out whatever our shot's going to be. Now notice it drew it on layer A. Now I can double click on the layer and I'll just name this one Fred. So we're going to say that this character is Fred. We also have a background layer. And if I want to add new layers, I can do that over here at the bottom. So if I want to add in another layer for a different character or for a foreground element. So maybe this is going to be my tree. So I can click on that. I'm going to go back to Fred and we're just going to continue Fred down a little bit. Now if I go to my tree layer to draw my tree, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more. Split, pull some branches for it. Maybe there's some clumps of leaves occupying the space. And again, we don't need to put a lot of detail in because a lot of what we're trying to do is, in most storyboarding, we're really working on shot composition and timing when we start working into animatics. So like other programs that we work with, other graphical programs, we have layers, we have tools that we can work with. You can choose different ones, different colors. So if I want to color something in, and now sometimes, you know, there is a nice tip where if I add in another layer underneath here and now I did modify one preference setting so there's a lot of preference settings on, on the Mac it's under storyboard drop down menu on Windows it'll be under edit and we go and choose our preferences and when we do that if we go all the way into uh, tools you can choose brush size cursor that's one that I like to use because that means now when my brush is bigger or smaller and we can size it dynamically by holding down O on the keyboard 
like in Toon Boom Harmony, it's the same shortcut. Now I can make my brush bigger or smaller. But because this layer is beneath my line art layers, if I wanted to just make my brush much bigger, so we can see I can color and fill that in. Now maybe I want to choose a lighter color for my character, make my brush a little bit smaller. And I can color my character in. If I want my tree to be dark. So a big part of what we're really generally going to be looking at is values. We'll be looking at composition, how we're filling the frame. We're caring less about exact details because you're trying to block out your story. So these are the core parts that we get started with when we're working on any frame. Now you could add in some background elements and things like that, but most of what we'll be working with in the beginning will be the pencil, the paintbrush, and the eraser tool. Uh, you can use the primitive tools, the rectangle, ellipse, line, polyline, and if you do have enclosed areas, of course, you can always use the paint bucket to fill them. Uh, you do sometimes have to modify the gap closure on it to get it to work effectively. But I think this method of just painting your fill colors on a separate layer from your liner can be a really easy way of working and maintaining control of your scene. So I'm going to encourage you to do that. Now, I have frame one here. And now what we need is, in most storyboards, it's about telling stories. So we start thinking about um, working through different shots that we're working on. So if we're not doing a full animatic, then what we're going to be doing is figuring out each shot. For each panel, we're figuring out the shot. So what action information describes this? So typically you're going to have a script that you're working from and you'll paste that information in. So you can paste in your action notes. If there's dialogue, you can paste that in as well. So you add these elements into the panel information. So we're figuring out whether here, you know, we have a medium shot that's showing us the character from waist up. Now to add in a, the next panel in my scene. So maybe the next panel is going to be a close up of the character's face. So that's what that next shot is. On the scene, we see across the top, we have options. We have new panel, new scene, new sequence, and we're not going to worry about the smart panels. Duplicate is something you may use, especially when you start doing animatics where you're going to duplicate a panel and then uh, modify the elements within that panel. That can be a very fast way of working. But right now if I add in a new panel, I click here and I get a new panel. Now we use panels when we're on a scene. So each panel is gonna represent a separate shot, whether it's a medium shot close up and paired together with whatever appropriate dialogue or action notes that go onto it. A new scene means we have changed locations. So we don't change scenes until we change locations. And we'll see down on the bottom where we have one, and that's referring to scene one, and then we have shot one or panel one and shot two or panel two. So it kind of depends on how you're working here. So in my second panel here, so now if, oh, I forgot my brush was big, so we can make the brush a little bit smaller for sketching. Can go back to the black that I was using. Now, you can decide what size brush you want to work with. So now if this time I have a close up on my character. And if you're working on a full production, you're probably going to have a character reference sheet or a model sheet that you're using so that you're trying to stay roughly on model, maintaining the core shapes, the basic shapes of whatever your model is. Now if I move and add in another panel, we can see that all of these are now part of the same scene, but now we're getting, I'm 
adjusting each of so we started out medium close up more of an extreme close up as I'm building into a reaction with the character so as we're putting this in these are all now shots at the same scene now if we move to a new scene so if I click here we can see now I am on scene two so now if in scene two we're sitting inside a room and that you now there's a window we have a door my character is in the doorway so I'm maybe in this scene they're entering into this space but it's now a separate scene so we can see how we have scene one scene two again you can add in all of your layers start adding in some basic values start planning out what you could do with lighting for your scene but on the whole getting started with storyboard pro is not something where it has to be super complex the biggest hurdle really is figuring out you know what is your story having your story that goes into it now if I look at my storyboard here I can paste in all of my script and then just highlight sections from here copy it go over into my panel and paste or if my script is open in a separate uh, script writing tool whether you're using duet writer or Caltex or uh, Microsoft Word whatever tool you're using to write your script you can put that in to your project so then you have it and you can copy paste but it is handy to just paste it into the script window so you have it the whole script accessible and then we start putting the pieces on to each of our panels here so maybe at this point I'm gonna go through and so so it's going to be medium shot of Fred behind the tree. And I don't know if Fred is saying anything or not. Now if I click to the next one here, uh, close up on Fred's face. What is happening? So maybe that's what he says there. Extreme close up on Fred's face. Fred enters the room. So, again, if you have a full script, it makes it a lot easier but I want to get some of these pieces in so we can see what is happening. As always, when you're working on a computer, do make sure that you're saving. That's going to be really important. And as we start getting more advanced, we'll learn that we can actually set up our scene with uh, 3D elements in it. We can have 3D guides so it can help with drawing 2D and 3D and 4D perspectives. So we can get really complex with it. So there's a lot of things that we're going to get into, but right now, we're just going to keep it simple. And notice we have panels that belong to a given shot. Now, if, or to a given scene. Now, if I add another panel onto this scene here, we'll just put this one in. And now, uh, doorway's behind, wall is there, the window is over there. and so we're moving into more of a medium shot but what I'm trying to do is get a couple panels here now if you have a panel and you don't want it you can just simply hit the delete key and it goes away it really is as simple as that 
You can also take panels and move them around. So if I wanted that panel for some reason to be there, that doesn't make sense, but I could. Now we'll go and put it back into that scene and you can drag a panel out of a scene so it becomes oh. here and we can see it allows me to create a new scene and work with that but we're not going to do that so we have a lot of flexibility while we're working you can see how the different layers are there thumbnails for the panels once you have your whole scene board it out again always make sure that you're saving regularly then what you can do is export and when we export it what we're going to do for now is export out a PDF when we export the PDF I click on PDF we have different options available I'm going to recommend that for now we go through and choose three panel vertical export everything I can choose where I want to put that so I am going to put that in my storyboarding folder here and we'll just call it, we'll leave it as, um, let's call it start SB. Now if I look in the folder, we'll see as I said it made a lot of things and I'm just going to put it in my jobs folder so it's now part of this project and I'll hit save, export, it exports it out, hit OK. And if you remember I said it's going to call it start. Well, there it is, called it start. And here are each of my boards. You can see where it shows the frame for what is the scene frame plus anything that kind of extends out when you're drawing it. That's how it does render it. We have our action notes, dialog if it's there, plus action notes, action notes, action notes, and there wasn't anything on that panel. You can see this shows it's scene two, panel one. Now we didn't set any timing durations, figuring out how long each of these are going to be. We'll worry about that kind of thing later, but right now we're just trying to get the basic handle on working with panels and scenes and putting those together. Now looking at what that did, if I go into start, we can see here's a folder. This is a project folder that shows me the different files that are part of this. The file that is a .sboard file, that is the actual project file, but it's worthless without these other folders and files that are inside. So if you want to ever share your whole project or move your project, say up onto uh, Microsoft OneDrive and store it there, you do need to compress this or zip it. So on a Mac, you'll just choose right click and choose compress. That creates a zipped file. If you're working on Windows, you'll right click on it and you'll choose send to and then compressed archive. That will also make a zip. But it's crucial that you make a zip to share it because if you just send the actual project file, that's worthless, it does nothing when you open it because it's now missing all of the drawings that have been added to the scene. So each layer becomes a drawing and each frame, so it's imperative that you keep all of it. Okay, so with that, hopefully that's enough information to get started and to have fun storyboarding.